So I told those of you that went to Twitter and sent me your questions for the weekly Q&A that I'd be back for a second iteration because I wanted to get through more questions. And that's what I'm here to do. So thank you to all of you. Make sure you follow the show on Twitter so that way you can participate in future Q&A videos. I enjoy doing these. It's been a while since I've done them. i got to get back in the habit of doing more of them. So without any further ado, let's dive right in. CM fucking goof starts us off by asking... How do you think things would have worked out for both Sting and the Ultimate Warrior if they ended up working for the opposite company? So Sting and WWF and Warrior for WCW during the heights of their careers in the late 80s, early 90s. Sting's career is one constant height, thank you very much, sir. That is an interesting question, though. One of those fascinating what-if scenarios. Warrior in WCW? Eesh. Eesh. He might have gotten a run at the top, maybe, but I don't think it would have been to like the level of what he got from WWF and Vince. Vince was perfect for the Warrior character. He got it. He understood it. He knew what to do with it. Most importantly, he knew how to pound it down everybody's fucking throat. Meanwhile, especially like Surfer Sting, oh my God, Vince would have fucking loved to have that dude. Sting would have been the guy in the 90s. He would have been the dude. Not Sean, not Brett, not Diesel, not Yoko. It would have been Sting. I have no doubt in my mind about that. Gambit190 asks, better feud, Rock versus the Hurricane from 2003 or the 2010 Batista-Cena feud where Batista made fun of Cena for kissing babies and hugging fat girls? <laughs> <laughs> you sit there kissing babies and hugging fat girls, <laughs> Dave. <laughs> um, <laughs> in terms of actual feuds from a pure entertainment standpoint, I actually go Rock Hur Hurricane, their little mini feud in 2003. That was some really good shit. Um, Batista say to see that you're kissing babies and hugging fat girls. You got to emphasize the fat girls, too. I guess it's legendary. We'll remember it forever, but I'll take Rock and Hurricane in their little mini feed. Daniel Sims, 23. Did WWE drop the ball with not letting Owen Hart win the WWF championship at SummerSlam 94 against Bret since they arguably had the best opening match in Mania history at WrestleMania 10? I think they missed the ball there. Like, I understand they were trying to go with Bret, you know, and make Bret the dude. I get that. But they could have had Owen win it at some point in 94. I guess it would have helped validate him at that point um, because hashtag Owen was better. Um, and, you know, when you look at the fact that Owen never got to hold that championship, yeah, you kind of wish they would have given it to him at some point in that run in 94. Dalek of Chaos asks, what would have been the best time to do Stone Cold versus CM Punk? Peak bitchy best in the world punk or straight edge society punk? Um, you know, when you say peak bitchy, like when has he ever not been bitchy? Like he's just a bitchy, bitchy guy, right? So you, you can't really use that as a differentiator here. Sorry. Um, I would go that best in the world punk, like especially when they were hyping up the video game. Like that's when the moment was right. That's when the fans were really pining for it. That's when it felt like the cards were lining up, the stars were aligned, that would have been the right timing to do it, especially kind of on the heels or in concert with um, Rock versus Cena. That would have been the time to do it. The Metal Smark asks, are you planning on doing more retro reviews? A short answer is yes. Longer answer is since the WWE went to fucking Peacock, a lot of the old content that used to be on the network and fucking on Peacock. Like I was looking to go watch a WCW pay-per-view, you know, RoboCop. And it wasn't fucking on there. And I'm like, well, that fucking sucks. I was looking forward to doing that review. So, yes, I'd like to start doing some retro reviews in the summer. But I've got to actually find shows that are available on Peacock. So there you go. Dexter C 73 who should face Sting in his retirement match? This young lion has a lot left in his tank, I promise you. What you meant to ask me is 
why would anybody but Sting be the opponent for MJF at All In? And the answer is, I don't fucking know. Like, this is so fucking obvious. You know, Jericho could be his warm-up match, that's fine. But when it gets to All In time, it needs to be Sting versus MJF. And then it is Sting versus CM Punk at Bound for Glory. It's not fucking difficult here. But seriously. Like this young Lion Sting finally having a chance to win the AEW Championship against the grizzled veteran MJF. The story is there. It's the match. You want to make that show feel as big as possible? There is no more interesting or compelling opponent for MJF at that show than Sting. Period. MFA2. Will there be a Bad Bunny Logan Paul match feud at some point? Yeah, I certainly believe there will be. I take a guess and say maybe it'd even be WrestleMania 40. And if it is, sign me the fuck up. Um, a underscore Cooge. Would you rather see CM Punk versus Joker Sting at Bound for Glory 23? Or John Cena versus Randy Orton at WrestleMania 40? This time it counts. You motherfucker, you hit right to the core of me, goddammit. Uh, <laughs> I will have to give the edge, though. CM Punk versus Joker Sting in Impact Wrestling at Bound for Glory 23 for the AEW World Heavyweight Championship? That has to get the edge. As badly as I want to see Cena versus Orton one more time, WrestleMania, an actual one-on-one -on -one match at Mania. It's fucking Joker Sting. It's Punk. It's Impact Wrestling. It's Bound for Glory. It's the AEW World Championship. Of course I want to see that most. <laughs> CMAT666 asks, How do you think this whole Elite versus Punk deal will ultimately play out? Will the Elite realize they need to do business for the good of AEW? Or will they keep being clowns? Well, let's separate the two components there. The Elite will always be punks and dipshits and pussies and clowns. Like, that's just the very fiber of who they are, right? Punk is bitchy. These guys are pussies. The best way I can sum it up. They may eventually do business, and by then it's too damn late. And maybe at some point the whole shit comes to a head. I don't know about all that, but that would be my guess, is at some point in time they may actually do business because they don't really have much else to do, and by then nobody's going to really give a shit. Uh, Mr. Jinx05, is The Rock versus Roman Reigns a lost cause at this point, or could it still happen? I think not only is it not a lost cause, I could potentially see it being even more likely to happen with The Rock's movie career, like, hitting a little bit of a speed bump right now. It might be a good time for him to take a little bit of a step back, pause, come back to wrestling for a little bit, do something different. You know, from a movie standpoint, they don't miss you if you never fucking go away. I could see, like, the, the, the opportunity, the time is now, if ever, for The Rock to come back and do a program with Roman Reigns for WrestleMania next year. I'd be, I'd be stunned if he didn't, frankly. Commando 1986. Jake Roberts said recently in his podcast, in his opinion, Bret Hart and Shawn Michaels were not good workers and that both couldn't sell. Thoughts? No disrespect to Jake, but he's fucking snorting if he thinks that. Like... No, come on. <laughs> Sometimes Shawn Michaels would oversell. Um, you know, and this comes down to the whole definition of what do you think is a good worker. Like, and I really get irritated when I hear people talk about these guys that do all the flips and the fake looking shit. Like the really legitimately fake looking shit. And they say, well, that's a great worker. No, they make the shit look fake. That's not working. To me, working is making it look like you're killing each other and you're actually barely hurting each other. That's working. Working a crowd into a fervor with emotion, with psychology, with storytelling, not because you went out there and crashed us dummied. Your body, that's working. Nah, that, that's stupid. I'm sorry, Jake knows better than that. Dexter C 73 asks, why aren't there any larger than life characters in wrestling anymore? Because for so many years, WWE was the only show in town and they made a strategic choice to never have larger than life stars again. They don't want that. They don't want these guys to get too big because they worry about them going off and doing movies and TV and Hollywood and all that other shit. 
You know, I really think that's the long-lasting impact of Brock Lesnar leaving to go to the NFL in 2004. Is he was the guy they had put everything into. And then it didn't fucking happen. And that's when they kind of settled, started to realize where they were at, and went with the fortunate four of Cena, Batista, Orton, and Edge. Because at the time, they felt like these are four guys that could be here a long time, but they're not going to go anywhere and do movies. Um, so I think it's a... Con- for the WWE, it's a conscientious choice. For AEW, it's because Tony Khan doesn't know how to fucking make them. That's why. Lil DJ Boy, it's been nearly a year since God Ugh, has taken over creative. What thing has he done better than Vince, and what thing did Vince do better than Triple H? In terms of something positive that Triple H did, a little more continuity with the storytelling, right? On the flip side, what's something Vince does better than Triple H? It's talent evaluation. Like, I'm sorry. A lot of the people that Triple H puts his stock behind and puts his money behind, they fucking suck. Like, he goes for these fucking glorified vanilla indie darlings, and it doesn't work. So, you know, Vince, for all of his faux pas and flaws from a talent and creative standpoint... He had a better eye for talent than Triple H, that's for damn sure, period. And DeMarcus Flowers closes out by asking, as an old school wrestling fan, where does the Bloodline storyline rank in the greatest storylines in wrestling history? It's, it's up there, right? Like you have so many great stories and so many great feuds, but in terms of like a, a story, it's, it's up there. It's not the top, it's not the top five, it's not the top ten. But it's certainly one of those ones that 10 years from now, I would look back pretty fondly of. And I would say, like, as people are talking about, this is one of the greatest I've ever seen. It would be one that I would say, you know what? I'm not even going to push back on that. It's not like sitting there and saying, well, the Shield is the greatest faction of all time. Like, that's just fucking stupid. But saying this bloodline story of the past two plus years is one of the best ones you've seen in your lifetime. That's not hyperbole. That's reality. So again, thank you to all of you that submitted your questions for this q and I'll probably do one in maybe two weeks or so, maybe sooner, who knows. Uh, when I ask for them next time, keep them questions coming. And as always, let's have a blast.